Hello everybody. Today's presentation is going to be about Joseph William Hardy, who is an important individual in the history of Perth and the Swan River Colony. Joseph William Hardy, an influential figure in the early history of Perth, who was an expert farmer in cultivated land near the Swan River. He also pioneered Wesleyan Methodism, which is a type of Protestantism or Christianity, and he strongly believed in the education of Indigenous Australians. Beginning Joseph Hardy was born on the 29th of April 1804 in Lincolnshire in modern-day England's northeast, as can be seen on the map on the right. He was the third son of 15 children, and in 1829 he married his wife Anne when he was 25 and she was 21. The long journey. Soon after marriage, the Hardys departed England on a boat called the Trandy. The newly married couple were also accompanied on this voyage by Joseph's two brothers, John and William. And here is a quote by a passenger that was on that voyage. The moon is nearly perpendicular and shines so brilliantly that we can read its light. Dated November 11th, 1829. Tranby. The ship, the Tranby, was about 8 metres wide, nearly 26 metres long and 5.2 metres deep. It filled up quickly with aspiring immigrants who wanted to seek a new opportunity in a new land, and the Tranby was about as long and wide as two modern day buses. Can you imagine spending months on end only having that much space for 57 people along with cows, horses, and pigs. And here is a modern-day replica of the Tramby, known as the Lady Washington. Here is a newspaper advertisement for the journey, for the new settlement on Swan River, New Holland. To accommodate, passengers will positively clear on the 25th and sail on the 27th instant. Now lying in the old dock, newly coppered and fitted up in a superior manner, with a capacious roundhouse for the accommodation of passengers, many of whom are engaged. She has capital heights being 6 feet 10 inches between the decks and will carry an experienced surgeon. Immediate application is desired and the terms of passage, also important information relative to the colony, may be had by applying, if by letter, postpaid. To George Locking, dated 20th of July 1829. Arrival at last. The Tranby had left England's shores in early September and saw land at noon on the 2nd of February 1830, after five months on the seas. They rounded Rottnest Island and came about the Swan River mouth the following day. And here is an artist's impression of what Fremantle looked like in 1830. The Peninsula The immigrants on the Tranby were Methodists, and they settled together on a 512-acre block which they called the Peninsula at the Swan River's banks at Maylands. The first Tranby house was built in 1830, shortly after the Hardy brothers left the struggling settlement of Fremantle. The soon-to-be-pictured house, coming in the next slide, was the third house built on the property, which was built in 1839. The land. Hardy had found the land to be inferior to much of the land higher up the Swan River, closer to the mouth. 
but he decided that this new land might be made to suit the general purposes of agriculture. What does agriculture mean? A picture is worth a thousand words. Now, whilst this picture doesn't have to do with the Swan River Colony or with the Hardys, it does help paint the picture of what the world looked like to Europeans hundreds of years ago before Australia had even been discovered. And it helps you to realize the level of detail and the level of information that they had compared to what we have now. Here's another angle of the Tranby House, a peninsula farm in modern day Maylands. Where have we heard the word Tranby before? Joseph's character. Joseph Hardy had very high moral standards and was strongly against dueling, where he regarded the participants as wretched murderers, and was also strongly against horse racing as he believed it represented everything that's bad, betting and drunkenness. He also founded the Total Abstinence Society, where in this context, abstinence means to not have any alcohol. He demanded high standards and a great amount of effort from his people. He was a very spiritual man and won admiration for his sympathetic service in visiting the sick, irrespective of their background. Joseph also believed that the majority of the immigrants to the Swan River Colony knew nothing of farming, though he strongly believed in hard work and he had faith in the future of the new colony, as can be seen by his quote in the following slide. There is little doubt but it will succeed and well if it receives the encouragement and support which all colonies need in their infancy. Joseph Hardy, 1832 Riverside Farm. Here is an image of a Riverside Farm and it's important to take note of some of the things that we see in this image as it will have to do with today's exercise to do with the content. So have a look at some of the things that are fit, featured in this image. Time at the Peninsula. During Joseph's time at Peninsula Farm, he cultivated a number of things, including wheat, rye, oats, and many garden vegetables, before later moving on to horses, grapes, olives, almonds, and flour milling. He had founded the Agricultural Society of the Swan River Colony in 1831 to help share knowledge with locals and to voice concerns that are facing those that live in the rural areas. He set up Wesleyanism in Western Australia with his brother and helped fund the first Wesleyan Church of Methodism in Perth in 1842. He was greatly disturbed by the encounter with the natives down at the river, known in modern days as the Pinjara Massacre, and advocated for the education and conversion of Aboriginal people in the colony. Joseph lived at Peninsula Farm until his death in 1875, where he left more than £12,000 to the Methodist Church. The exercise for today is to construct a bird's eye view diagram of what you believe riverside farming would have looked like in Joseph Hardy's time of the 1830s up to the 1870s. Please ensure that you label the different parts of your farm so we can clearly see what they are and feel free to be creative with how you make your farm look and with adding color but please make sure that it has to do with the time frame of joseph hardy so the 1800s thank you so much for being at this presentation and best of luck with today's activity